Welcome to Fireside Gaming. I'm Billum, and this week we're diving back into the Metal Slug series with a look at Metal Slug X. Metal Slug X is the second game in the Metal Slug series. Sort of. Actually, Metal Slug 2 holds that title, which makes sense. However, X is an updated version of 2. It features several improvements over the original, such as less slowdown during levels. Metal Slug X also beefs up some other features that were introduced in Metal Slug 2. Because of these factors, I consider it the definitive version of the game and the one that's better to play. Metal Slug X takes the run-and-gun gameplay of Metal Slug, which I've already reviewed on this channel, by the way, and amps it up even further. Just like with the first game, players are treated to hordes of enemies on screen at once, zany boss fights, and loads of special weapons. The game has players yet again fighting against General Donald Morden and his Rebellion Armed Forces after defeating them in the first game. This has them trekking through six levels as members of the Paragon Falcon Squad fighting back the Rebellion Army. It's worth noting that players have more options this time around. Instead of just Marco Rossi or Tarmar Roving, you can also play as Eric Kasamoto or Fiolino Jeremy. Metal Slug X progresses in a similar manner to the first game, with players beating levels and taking down bosses, all while climbing aboard the powerful Metal Slugs for some needed boost in combat ability. There's even a boss battle with the bald, machine gun wielding Alan O'Neill again, though this time he suffers defeat at the mouth of an orca that eats him after the battle. Remember how I said Metal Slug X amps up everything from Metal Slug? That includes the comedy. Alan getting eaten is a prime example of this, but there's also the ability to become fat by eating too much. This makes the player less maneuverable, but also beefs up whatever weapon they have on them at the time. Plus, it's just plain silly, and I love it. That goofiness extends to weapons as well. For example, we get the Iron Lizard in this game, which is a missile on wheels that dashes forward to strike enemies on the ground. It's easily one of my favorite weapons in the series. There's also the bouncy drop shot that I don't really care as much for, but it is what it is. That strangeness continues to build into the final levels when players find themselves fighting against alien invaders from Mars. These Martians are assisting the Rebellion Armed Forces, or at least it appears that way. After showing up to take Morden on in a final battle, players watch as the aliens betray and abduct him into their ship. This results in a massive battle against the alien mothership that has both members of the regular army and the Rebellion Armed Forces teaming up to take it down. This is one of those segments in gaming that just feels so dang good that it's worth experiencing on your own. The sheer chaos of attacking the alien ship while members of both forces run into help is great. Heck, there's even this prisoner that shows up to launch Kamehameha waves at anyone dumb enough to get close to him. It's just so much fun, and is reason alone enough to play Metal Slug X. Of course, the whole journey is worth taking alone or with a friend. Metal Slug X is a great game for co-op play, though I unfortunately didn't get any footage of that this time around. I also have to mention that the Steam version supports remote play, which means only one person has to have the game for both people to be able to play it together. There's also the couch co-op option as well, if you've got friends living close enough to you that you can go this route. And just like with the first Metal Slug, Metal Slug X is incredibly easy to get thanks to that Steam release. The game is 8 bucks on its own, but I recommend getting the Metal Slug bundle that also includes the first and third games too. That comes in at just 15 bucks, which is a fair price in my opinion. If you don't want to shell out that much, you can always wait for it to go on sale. It's also worth noting that players don't have to worry about running out of continues, as there's a free play option in Metal Slug X. If you're looking for some extra challenge, the game has multiple difficulty options, as well as the ability to limit the number of continues during a playthrough. There's also no denying that SNK were masters of sprite art. Metal Slug X is a prime example of that, with there being so much to take in during each level. It also helps that all of the characters are so well animated, and it really brings the game to life. On that same note, the soundtrack for Metal Slug X is a perfect fit for the game. While it's not the type of music I listen to outside of the game, that doesn't make it any less impactful when playing. Overall, Metal Slug X is an incredibly good game. It takes everything that the first Metal Slug does and builds on it to great success. I advise checking it out to this day, as a great way to kill time by yourself or with friends. The action, graphics, audio, goofy nature, and ease of access all make it worthwhile even more than 20 years after its original release. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching, and feel free to like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoy what I'm doing here. Also, you can hit me up on Twitter at Billum2562. And as always, take it easy.